What happens when four Russians are stuck in a cable car with nowhere to escape? Well... Just kidding, but in this video we follow these five characters. As always, we scrutinize their behavior, gently point out their mistakes and impose our humble but most definitely superior opinions upon them. God have mercy. Nastrovye. Our characters are these people right here. We got Katya and Kirill, a dysfunctional couple because that's what every survival movie needs. She is pregnant with his baby but he doesn't know because she will break up with him after the holiday. At least, that's her goal. The plan that her boyfriend has, on the other hand, is basically bribing a cable car operator to get to the mountain top, to celebrate New Year's Eve in a special kind of fashion. Which is kind of a weird thing to do, no? I mean, I can't imagine anything worse than freezing my butt off while looking at the blurry fireworks through the clouds beneath. Not to mention the way up and the way back down is just a waste of time, really. As they get to the gondola station, they walk through it as if this was their grandma's chalet, which makes me wonder how that's possible, but then I remember that they're in Russia, so I don't think we should question these things. Anyway, the operator denies them access, claiming the station has been closed for over an hour now and New Year is only an hour away. This upsets our characters because they have made a deal with him weeks ago. As things start to get messy, Dennis, this guy, and by the way, the only reasonable person around here, takes the operator to the side and convinces him to let them go. As they are about to take off, Kirill realizes that he has lost his bag. He decides to stay back, but his girlfriend Katya remains inside the cabin. At this point, let me introduce you to the other three characters. Otherwise, we might miss the chance, if you know what I mean. This is Dennis, as mentioned, the only reasonable person around his girlfriend Vika, and Mikhail, undoubtedly the most annoying person here. As they move upwards, he keeps hitting on Katya, which if I were her, would push me to 619 him outside the gondola, no joke. They pop the first bottles of champagne and start to warm up. After all, it's New Year's Eve. But just a few moments later, the gondola gets stuck. Before we continue here, let me point out the obvious. How are they going to get back down anyway? I mean, they brought skis and snowboards, which implies they will ski back down, right? Fair enough, I mean, there are many places where you can safely ski down after sunset. However, as we see, they aren't on an ordinary ski lift, right? They're literally in a cable car going up very steep. To get down again just with skis and snowboards seems to require an incredible amount of skill and luck, because you cannot control the weather, and without the moon, it would be pitch dark up here. Meaning just one cloud or one storm and you will be stuck up there anyway. I guess the point that I'm making is that even if they arrived up there, getting back down again without the cable car seems to be almost impossible. The cable car seems to trespass miles upon miles, so unless the slopes are highlighted, forget getting back down again before sunrise. I mean, look at this. Everyone who has been skiing knows that these outages tend to happen, and when they happen, they usually last for just a few minutes at a time. However, the guy we bribed before is a very responsible person because he stayed back and fixed the problem just in time. At the same time, our characters find the backpack of Kirill, and inside they find more bottles of champagne, great, and to the surprise of Katya, an engagement ring. But that's not the weird thing, okay? The weird thing is the parachute. I mean, I have no idea what these people plan to do up there, but I am very confused. However, we now know at least why uh, Kirill insisted on finding the backpack before entering the cable car. Katya too feels a bit bad about the situation. She thought that he was just making a scene back at the station, but finding the ring, she now understands the importance of the lost backpack. We cut to the cable car operator who enters the basement to check on the mail function from before. And oh boy, isn't this final destination. <laughs> Great, uh, his dangling keys got stuck in the machinery and he strangled himself. Um, there are worse ways to die, but this is very bad. And now our characters are stuck for good. Okay, the good thing about being stuck in a cable car is that you are in a confined space. It isn't an airtight space, so coldness will still enter. 
but at least it isn't all too windy, which makes it much more comfortable uh, and safe in the long run. The bad thing though is that cable cars are usually much, much further away from the ground than ordinary ski lifts, which makes an escape very difficult. The biggest threat as always in freezing environments is hypothermia, which as you know, kicks in when the body loses heat faster than it can produce. The lack of food, sleep and appropriate clothing all boost the risk of hypothermia. But luckily our characters all wear pretty decent winter clothing. But let us have a look at what a real life scenario says. People get stuck in cable cars all the time. If you look up the news, this stuff almost happens weekly. Normally, however, you don't bribe officials and use these gondolas outside service hours, right? In 2016, for instance, 110 people were stuck in multiple gondolas above Mont Blanc, which if you didn't know, is the highest peak in Europe. Good luck. Out of these 110 people, only a few dozen could be rescued. All others had to spend the night up there and they were not freezing to death. Now that doesn't mean it was comfortable, but it does mean nobody died. Meaning to spend the night up there doesn't mean you will freeze to death instantly. But what does it mean for our characters? Well, it means that if you can't reach out to anyone, which they can't because their phones can't connect, then waiting it out is the single best option you have. The mistake they make though is they party and vibe with their bottles of champagne. Granted, why not? It's New Year's Eve and you don't have anything better to do. But drinking alcohol in this situation is a bad idea. You see, despite the warm feeling you get after drinking alcohol, what it actually does is cooling down your body temperature even further. Now this would be a fatal mistake. The best thing to do is sit tight together, zip up your jackets for God's sake and try to get a mobile connection going. The days aren't the problem. You will hardly die from hypothermia during these. The biggest issues are the nights and if you happen to be stuck up there for more than 3 days, then starvation enters the chat. Our characters wake up completely hungover, which if you ask me is another good reason to avoid alcohol in this situation. Venice went on top of the gondola to check out the situation. Unlike ski lifts, cable cars traverse much longer distances, making it difficult to reach any of the towers these gondolas usually pass. But whatever you do, okay, this is not a good idea. Standing on top of a frozen metal surface looking 100 meters down into death itself should be avoided if you can. Meanwhile, Vika found an emergency torch and is screaming for help. Now say what you want about her screaming, but she was the only person that actually went through the cabin to find helpful items. And these torches are very useful. At the same time, the two babushkas enter their shift. Complaining about why they have to work today, they don't seem too enthusiastic about their job. Can't blame them. Everyone who has been to countries with very low wages know how painful it is to deal with any sort of authority. It's just frustrating. Often offices are closed and you don't even know why. And neither do they tell you nor do they themselves know when their service is up again. And this is exactly what happens here as well. Both babushkas question why the cable cars aren't working, but are quick to brush it off as they sit down to enjoy their Russian salad. I mean, Priatnova. At the same time, we cut to Kilin, the only reasonable hope our characters have left. Waking up with a hangover as well, he receives a call from his mother and tells her that he will be coming home today. Not being able to see any of his friends nor his girlfriend makes him even more angry about last night's situation. Meanwhile, our characters find a harness and a very lengthy rope. They plan to get down vertically and escape the mountain with their skis and snowboards. Fair play, but executed completely wrong. Now they fasten the rope on the railing while Dennis, our main guy, straps on the harness and fixates the rope around his torso. The other three characters will guide the rope slowly to grant him a safe journey. As he's going down, he drops his snowboard to prepare for his jump. The snowboard, however, causes a huge avalanche to go loose, discovering a massive crevasse. Realizing that there is no chance for him to escape like that, he tries to communicate the event to the others up above. However, all of them are busy giving him more and more rope. None of them observe Dennis way down, which, of course, is a huge mistake. Two people would have been enough to control the rope, while one other person would stand by above the opening, observing Dennis while also guiding the rope. That way, if necessary, they could have just pulled him swiftly up, and we would not have lost a valuable member of the team. Because that is exactly what happens. Now 
Now Dennis almost falls, causing Mikhail to lose control and drop through the opening as well. At the same time, the railing breaks loose and injures Vika in the process. Both guys are about to die, but Mikhail, the one above, pulls out his knife and swiftly cuts through the rope underneath, causing Dennis to fall into his death. Now what seems to be very insensitive and cruel is something that actually happens often when professional mountain climbers cross crevasses. If someone falls and there is no chance of pulling that person back up, often the only solution is cutting them off. In any way, it's three people left. Not only did we lose the most reasonable person, but the gondola is now also susceptible to extreme coldness, entering through the massive opening. The first thing I would do at this point is using the snowboards and all else I can find to block these openings from cooling down the cabin. Once this is done, I would check on Vika and then, I suppose, it's wait for better days. Now as Vika is badly injured and Katya is taking good care of her, a helicopter sound atones from afar. They climb on top of the gondola to wait for help. Now Katya grabs the torches, lights them up and screams for rescue. The helicopter though has already turned around and is flying away. If there was a chance for help, I guess this was it. Now Mikhail of course becomes very angry and assaults her. In the process she almost falls and the only opening back to the gondola shuts itself, causing both of them to be locked outside. Meanwhile we cut to Kirill who is leaving to the airport. Now even though he is very angry with his friends, the point that he can't reach them after they have illegally climbed the mountain should ring the bells, no? If he's really concerned, he should have just swallowed his ego and go check on them. Now we cut back to the gondola where Mikhail is becoming more and more a problem. He's screaming at Katya, blaming her for virtually everything and then even forcing her into a very risky stunt. A fight breaks out. At the same time, the screws spring loose and the whole construction gets unstable. Now with a lot of luck, Katya makes it in and of course locks him out. At the same time he grows even more angry and eventually falls into his death as well. One problem less. I think it's safe to say that now he's gone, the chances of survival are quite a bit better. Now Kirill, who has arrived at the airport at this moment, tries to reach out to his friends one last time. When he calls the hotel, he finds out that his friends have never checked in, resulting in him realizing that something must have happened. He calls a taxi and is now on his way back. Now meanwhile Katya, the sole survivor so far, is slowly freezing to death. She realizes that her friend Vika has sadly passed away, but because of that she's able to recover her jacket and at least can get some warmth back. She isolates the cabin as good as possible and tries to light a fire with the items and paper she finds. And it works. But at the same time, a loose structure bumps into the window again and again, causing the window to give away cracking noises. Now, in my opinion, you should hear that loud bang and act accordingly. The last thing you want is a broken window a second after you have lighted the fire. And that is exactly what happens. At this point, as harsh as it seems, but you should strip off your dead friend's clothing and put on layers upon layers onto you. The more layers, the better. Katya is given up hope. Okay, she takes out her phone and starts recording her last message to the world and Kirill. Meanwhile, Kirill, who ended up in a traffic jam somehow, decides to go for a casual run through the blizzard to rescue his love. He eventually arrives at the foot of the mountain and tries to convince a snow groomer to get him up. He at first declines but eventually agrees after he has seen how serious Kirill is. Now, while they are getting up the mountain, Katya is struggling to stay alive. At this point, it's getting serious. The loose structures caused by Mikhail's outburst from before are even more unstable now, causing the gondola to almost fall for good. As she seemingly falls into her death, Kirill arrives at the gondola station and realizes that his friends are probably dead. He understands that without him bribing the official at the beginning of this movie, this would not have happened. And before we think the movie is over, we cut one last time to Katya who has surprisingly survived. She somehow survives as long as necessary until Kirill and a team of rescuers come to save her. In the end, she was the only person to survive and something tells me that she probably won't go skiing again anytime soon. And that was this movie for this week. Now this wasn't the perfect how to beat example, uh, I want to apologize for that. I hope you could still enjoy that. We got an updated plan coming in next week, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, looking forward to see you again. Peace.